Bam. Bam. Okay. okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, there will be a replay. And if you get frozen, push the button on the top of the screen. It will just refresh the screen. You don't have to re-log in or anything like that, which is good. Enable pop-ups because you're going to be connecting with the bot. Um, if you have questions, introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Are you a farmer? Are you a processor? Are you a, uh, an attorney? <laughs> are you a chemist? What are you? Are you an investor? What are you? That would be good. When we say, what are you? Who are you and why? Yeah. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're open to paragraphs. Uh, we, we will listen. We're here. <laughs> we're here to listen. We're, this is Listen Radio. Oh, <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe uh, to our podcast, please, and share it with your friends. There will be a replay. Appreciate you being here. Uh, there will be polls. We, we're going to be doing things. The team is going to be answering your questions. We had a lot. We had a survey. Yeah, we did. It was good, too. We got lots of respondents. We got a lot of respondents. Yeah, it was good. It was, you guys are, I didn't hear, I have not heard of most of those. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I, I looked on the internet and I was like, okay, is there anybody done a, you know, survey on ultimate hamstrings or what yeah. pref people's preferences are? There's nothing there. So this is a first. Oh. Even on Google. We, we break yeah. ground every day. Every day. Yeah. So, yeah. And it, and it hurts. By the way, uh, having, having said that, since we're on that topic, a uh, survey, we're going to keep the survey open. Oh. And so it's just going to continuously roll. We'll post it on our website, and it'll just continuously roll. And maybe, maybe uh, at the end of the season, we'll, we'll get even more respondents. We'll see. I think that would be good, because then we'll see all the strains, and we'll be able to compartmentalize. And then I think we should have a big grand prize or something for well, something cool you know what would be really cool is if we got all the strains that that people have and get like little snippets little flowers of them so that we can just uh you know take terpene profiles of them and smell them and okay so so far how many times have we used the word cool i think it's just because of the aroma <laughs> in the first few minutes of this show yes that's it's called the entourage effect it i think is. we are i think Whew. we are entouraging i can't feel my feet <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Oh, by the way, Linda Kelly from Big Stone City, South Dakota. I didn't even know there was a Big Stone City, Ooh, South Dakota. Uh, where is that? Uh, where is that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Linda Kelly, welcome. Thank you. And she won a 10-pack of Relief CBG seeds for taking the hemp strain survey. Sweet. So All those right. are going to be randomly selected. Yeah. Uh, we won't harass you too much. Or um, at all? Well, she got CBG seeds. That's pretty cool. That's a great harassment. Yeah. I mean, and it's relief CBG seeds. I like that. So, Linda, kudos. Good job. Uh, today, again, we are going to be talking about the ultimate list of hemp strains. Uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit uh, mislabeled a little bit because we're going to be talking about the survey results. We're going to talk about what people, um, you know, what they were looking for in the strains and all that stuff. Um, and I think that here, here's what I predict. I, when we we get like a, you know three four hundred respondents, I think that then we will be able to publish the ultimate list, which oh. is really cool. So the, yeah, yeah, we we only had fifty three respondents, but fifty three is a lot. But just then starting, I think, I mean, I that's think just we list them. Then? Let's yeah. list them, and then yeah. we can have people rate them. They're all they're all there, so. and you can try them all. Yeah. Try them all. We'll do that. So we're going to be covering things like hemp strains, hemp biomass. Uh, we're going to talk about Wisconsin hemp flower because that's where we are. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about terpenes, hemp terpenes, strain terpene profiles, high might. Myrcene. Thank you. High yeah. myrcene <laughs> strains. Uh, here's a trivia question for you guys. Okay. Uh, so 72. <laughs> 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 was that not the okay, right strike, answer? Strike back. <laughs> We're gonna keep going. Don't worry oh, about it. We'll, we'll get to that like later. My answer. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. No C more terpene <laughs> shows for you. CBD and THC ratio, hemp harvest, high CBD hemp strains, high CBD strains, CBD strains, and smokable hemp flour. Okay, that's what we're going to be discussing. That's a lot. We got. Oh, and there's yeah. more. There's more. Wait. There's I can't more. wait. Go ahead. Wait, there's more. There's more? Yeah. I got them all. Oh, I, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. I hit them all. Well, let's, 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 okay. let's so, get into this. So thing. here's the only other thing. Before, as, before I turn it over to the table man, I mean Dr. T, <laughs> I mean <laughs> the ultimate hemp strain. Oh, you got to turn it up. If you're going to use the sound effects, you got to do it. <laughs> it's too far away. I know. Because we, we have all this we, stuff. Here. It is. St there's a lot of stuff here. Um, it's making my eyes water in a good way. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, fun and safe place. Ask all your questions. Let's keep going. There will be a replay. Um, check out our all of our resources, live tour, CBD jam session, extraction guide, distillation guide. We've got our calculators library, lots of calculators, and mini courses are coming. Uh, so we've got a lot going. So introduce yourself. Uh, let's do it. And the other thing I was going to say is, even though this is the ultimate hemp strains, I think the CBD will alleviate any strain. I think so. Uh, uh, that's think the whole point of it, right? Th exactly. <laughs> so let, let's get started here. Okay, all right, so let's go. It's all yours. Uh, first of all, how you like the color? Uh, does it look like a sun, like the rising sun uh, against a full moon, uh, a super moon? Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. That's the painter coming out in you. Yeah, I guess so. So there's the ultimate. Okay, so we... A scientific creative. A couple, what was it, about three, four weeks ago, we were thinking, okay, well, what's our topic? We had a meeting mm -hmm. on what topics we were going to have. <laughs> and we kind of did a planning session, right? And we, this we was one of the things. Yeah. So we decided, okay, well, we need to have a hemp survey to find out what people like, because one of the topics was, you know, all about hemp strains and, and what people are looking for sure. and everything. So mm -hmm. uh, we had our uh, social media manager, uh, Jared, who does a Go great Jared. job. Ho, ho, ho. He basically uh, came up with a you know, a list of questions and a list of answers, you know, drop down and he pulled our audience. Wow. Okay. So what was really cool is uh, we got respondents from all over the world. Wow. Central America, South America, um, Europe, Eastern Europe. Uh, we got, we, they're, they're, it's scattered all over the world, which is really, really cool. Um, so I, I didn't even know we had listeners all over the world like that, but we do. We oh, yeah. absolutely do. Shout so, out to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Asia, Africa, all the continents, Australia, yes, New we, Zealand. W we didn't have any respondents from Japan. I don't think they grow hemp there. Oh, they do. Oh, I've talked they? to people. Okay. Yeah. I, so I, I, I would like, I'd like to they see. They, it's right next to the matcha field. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. And matcha rocks, by the way. Um, and I mushroom up my matcha with some chaga. Okay. I, nobody I, no cares. Comment, no comment. On I that. know. Okay. Nobody cares. That's okay. Okay. So that doesn't what, stop prevent what do we, me from saying it. What do we look for <laughs> in a strain? Oh. That's, that's the first question that was on there. And there were a bunch of canned answers in there. So um, the second one is, what terpenes do you want from the strains? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the biggest issue you faced with the strains? Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you were growing and then you had an issue with what you planted, basically. How to get it to grow better, how to get a higher yield, or right. how do you get the flavor yeah. dialed in, that right, kind of right, stuff. Right, exactly. Okay. And then what was the determining factor in the purchase? Okay. And then uh, of the seeds, we're talking about the seeds specifically. Sure. And then, you know, the strain that you, did, you know, I think a lot of people research the strains. They go and they, they look for, you know, what was reputable, right? Okay. And, uh, and a lot of times they'll go to the internet they'll, and then they'll look at reviews and everything. Um, but sometimes you just, you miss something, you know? So sure. what we're trying to do here is raise awareness as to what you might miss when you are looking for a strain, okay? And then uh, what is your favorite variety? So these are the questions that we asked, asked the crew and, uh, you know, in my view, the we got 53 respondents here. Let me take a look here. 53 respondents. 53. 15 countries. Oh, look at that. Um, and they're they're from all over the place, so it's pretty cool. W we had um, basically because some of them were in our database. We know we know f we know for example some of them were farmers. Some of them were for Can from Canada, so they were LPs. Um, and then because um, they registered, when you register, we know you know who you are and stuff like that. So and then some of them were manufacturers. So we kind of got a nice smattering. Great. Of yeah, it wasn't just the farmers, which I, I thought like that those guys would be the only ones who would answer, but no, it's not. No. It wasn't the case. Well, they're so probably too busy right now. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, they're out, they're out harvesting right now. So yeah, that's when we're getting this. So. Yeah. So anyway, so that's it, and we're going to keep this survey open. It's going to be really cool. Keep because answering. I, I feel that uh, you know probably we'll we'll plug it every now and then, so you guys are reminded by it. But but we have you know just the native traffic on our website, and then. Uh, maybe we'll do some Facebook uh, posts and things like that. We'll we'll see if we can continue this. I'd like to see uh, a whole bunch of uh, you know a whole bunch of data coming out of it. That'd be yeah. really cool. And so. let's uh, let's get some competition with your friends. Invite your friends. See what their favorite strains are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll share. Uh, okay, so we'll have another follow up to this. Uh, maybe when we hit maybe three hundred respondents or something like that. Let's we'll go do a follow up and, yeah. and see how it goes. So anyway, um, so that's that's just it. Um, so the first question is, what do you look for in a ham strain? 
So look at this. It says here you got quality. and So number one was quality. So this is count. Wow. Okay, and then we're just adding up. So over the 53, that's how many responded to that particular option. Okay. Oh, oh that's interesting. So you can see that um, as the sample size gets larger and larger and larger, we ought to be able to um, get, uh, you know, even better statistics here. But, um, I, but that but doesn't actually, surprise me, though, that, that quality is, is that high. 53 is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. quality is that high. So people are looking, when they're looking at a strain, they're really looking for, okay, what is the quality of the terpenes? How yeah. does it smell? Yeah. Which is interesting because here we have all this stuff here that <laughs> that's good. That's got Ooh, some wonderful, it very wonderful smell. Wonderful aroma. Yeah. And so the question is, okay, so here's some seeds right here. How do you know that that seed is going to produce an aroma that comes from this plant, for example? Now that plant, we, we, we picked that plant specifically because you can see it's got some genetics. It's got some uh, issues uh, with maybe some viruses or something. But we'll, we'll get into that in just a little bit. This would fall under the problem problem but you can see there's little tiny flowers there. yeah there are. so this is just just starting look at bud, how green that is you know that's beautiful yeah yeah anyway so how do you know that this is going to produce that right so mm -hmm. with the right strains we grew um a whole bunch of i think we grew like maybe 40 acres of one particular variety last year and uh it came out we got really nice buds good yield uh you know it it went late into the season yeah. but when we got it, it didn't have it didn't have the flavor or the aroma profile that we really wanted. You mm. know, it had it was little less in aroma, so it didn't have any of that skunky smell at all or any, anything along those lines. So, um, but when we extracted it, it it had a good aroma to it. Oh. So you know, I don't, you know, so some, sometimes that's uh, kind of interesting. So you can see number one was quality in terpenes. Um, people want to have a good yield, obviously, right? So. Um, you know, you sure. don't want to have a plant that's so small that it's not going to yield, you know, maybe a quarter pound, you know, per plant or something like that. You're going to, you know, so some people, they, when in good climates and everything, they're, they're getting like a, you know, pound and a half, two pounds a plant. I've never actually heard of a two pounds a plant. One pound a plant is probably a lot, but yeah. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure there's someone in our audience who's grown two pounds of uh, flour per plant. I, I don't know. Maybe they'd, they'd almost have to, you know. Would that be hemp foie gras? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to Sorry. Definitely. Um, you'd have to prop it up, right? Yeah, and that's going to be. Okay. I, if somebody has a two-pound two pounder flower plant, yeah, we'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Take pictures. Really Send us pictures. Right. I'm guessing Jared would be all over that. I don't think. You know, prizes. probably with something that big, you'd, you'd almost have to extract it because I... <laughs> you know, the flowers would be so big. I mean, there's no be no way to, really, yeah. you know, I don't know. Anyway, so quantity, uh, you know, be kind of like, uh, you know how they grow those the, those big mushrooms? Yep. And the, the, the bigger they are, the the more expensive they are. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Can yeah. you imagine, like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a bud, like, this big? That's, that, would <laughs> that would be That's awesome. That's big. That, that would be big. There may be issues with like mold growing in the, uh, you know, in the crevices. Inside, so maybe yeah. that's an issue. So yeah. anyway, so quantity high yield. I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking here. Uh, you know, okay, quantity high yield, weight quality, quality terpenes. So this is where they had two. Oh, okay. So th uh, these people, they they. It was a actually, combination. It was a combination. So by far, these two are the ones, right? It's because you really have yeah. to add these together onto here. Yes. So this is a combo. Okay. If Ooh. I had had more time, I would have broken them up and added that. But I actually, so I would need to add another five on to, you know, six, seven on to these ones. So that would have been really great. Yeah. And then, so that would have made these two characteristics dominate clearly. Sure. Fiber, see, there are people who are, you know, growing specifically for fiber. Yes. Um, there is a great fiber market, by the way. Huge it's industrial hemp yeah, market. Yeah, export market. Um that's a part of the trade deal, obviously, that was, um, that was uh, ratified. So there are, for example, there's uh, Chinese uh, buyers looking to buy fiber. So yeah. if you are in, in that. And then also there's great USDA programs for export yes. of fibers and for uh, export. And you can get, um, you know, they will, there are different programs. And I know that you can actually... Once you have the agreement, you can actually get prepaid on that agreement. It's guaranteed. Wouldn't so, that be nice? Oh, man. It, it is wonderful. So, uh, 
botanical or farming exports is a really great thing. Yeah, there's a lot. I've ta- I, I've had uh, people in here, farmers and and investors, both coming in even last week. I've got more this afternoon, but they talk about that industrial side of it, and then they 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 top the crop, so that's they and they right. harvest that for the right. hemp right. that we're used to, but the rest of the plant is all. Right. For industrial use. And right. they use everything down to the roots. Yeah, right. Isn't it cool? It is cool. So that's uh, that's the fiber and seed. I mean, that's uh, obviously they're putting it into, um, you know, natural, natural. I mean, we had a guy here um, a couple of weeks ago who uh, delivered to us and gave me a couple like hemp uh, hemp sweatshirts and hemp shirts. Yeah. They were really nice. Oh, yeah. They're very soft. Oh, they're really great. So yeah. anyway, we will probably do some business with him but uh yeah anyway so and they're fibers. turning some of that into like kevlar it is very don't strong. try shooting somebody with it, it's wearing a hemp it, shirt it, though it is very <laughs> strong. it's not that strong uh, but not that strong yes so then there's a lot of people are looking for a quick turnaround in other words they want to have um they want to have auto flowers so what an auto flower is is you you grow it and it doesn't really rely on uh the cycle of the sun to oh. flower well, that's interesting. Because usually you need 12 on, 12 off in order for it to start flowering, um, meaning the sun has to be up at 12, 12. Okay, so that's so an auto flower will just flower on its own. So that's pretty sweet. The plants are typically smaller, um, you know, and um, less stock uh, and less pound per plant. But one great thing about auto flowers that I've seen is you can have a greater density uh, of, you can put them closer together. Mm. So instead of doing, you know, maybe... Um, you know, f- 500 to 1,000 per acre, you're doing, you know, 2,000 per acre or 2,500 per acre. Wow. So, it's, you know, they're, they're, they're very dense. Eight, eight inches centers, yeah, or 12 inches centers. So that's pretty cool. Mm. Um, so then you got quick turnaround. Oh, hey, look at that. These guys, auto flowers, quantity. Oh, these are people who had all of everything, all, abo- all the above. Look at that. Wow. Quick turnaround, quantity, quality. And fiber seed. Fiber seed. Uh, so if I was going to redo this, this probably would have been better in a percentage plot. Yeah. Because then it would have uh, it would have counted all the all the. Um, well, we're going to hold this against factors. you for life. You okay. Know. But you know you have to <laughs> add this on there. So anyway, that's it. So that's uh, that's the what they're looking for. Uh, I think quali- quality uh, wins by far. Oh yeah, because even in the last one, the only thing that's off of the last one is fiber or seed. Right. So right. So fiber or seed would be the least. Right. Right. Um and so then quick turnaround. Yeah, so when you go quality. and buy, for example, you're looking for look for an auto flower, you're looking for, hey, show me what this is going to smell like. Yep. Um can you send me a bud so I can smoke it or sample it or taste it? And then hey, show me a plant so I can actually see what this looks like and how long does it take, okay? So if it takes too long and you're in a short growing season, you're going to need to, uh, you know, you're going to need to buy an autoflower. Sure. And if you're not, if you're in a longer growing season, you get a 90 days or something like that, then you can just do a regular plant. Yeah, and I think that this table is good. It just, what this represents to me is that the, the respondents, uh, half of the respondents, played by different rules than the other half probably yeah because there's one half selected one and the other selected as many as they wanted to right that's true (laughs) (laughs) i'm actually surprised at the number of fiber um people yeah that's that's pretty cool that is for just standalone yeah sure okay so that's that um what are your current favorite varieties wow Ooh, look at that that's pretty look at look at all the colors (laughs) I like the pastel. I want to sing again. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know what? I notice here that these are not listed here because they probably didn't have room there, but there's a whole bunch of them here. So we got at the bottom here, the big ones. Okay. Sour Space Candy, Gelato, um, T1. A lot of people are doing Dynamed CBD, Sativa, OG Kush, and Suvarez and Lifter. That's that. Those strains. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six and strains. Oregon count for CBD up there. Yeah, but big. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Oregon CBD. Oh, anyway. Nine point six. Wow, it, it looks like we've got a four-way tie. One. It, well, if you get five-way tie for nine point oh six. Word. Okay, so you got seventy-five percent <coughs> of all the strains really tied up in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight different strains. Wow. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, and then you got all these other little ones. Yeah. That's actually pretty interesting for that many respondents. Yeah. 
lots of different varieties. I kind of wonder if they're all just the same seed packaged up into different labels. <laughs> I know that that's not the case, okay? It, it, but it could be the case if you had, you know, you got to, you got to, we got to kind of watch out. Um, one of the things that you look for, obviously, with a favorite variety is, you know, did you get a lot of males? So if you, yeah. uh, you know, if you are sure. growing acreage, First you don't want to have to walk through all of that no. and pull the males. But a lot of people do that. They walk and they pull the males and then they'll take, uh, they'll grow a little plot off to the side and they'll just replace that one that they pulled out with a, with one that they grew off on the side. Oh, wow. So that it's a, a okay. nice, nice looking field. So that's good. But you can see, I mean, yeah. So all of these will have a different flavor and uh, flavor and aroma profile for sure. I love some of these names. Yeah, the lifter right here, we grew some of that. I mean, it was it was pretty good. It it we f harvested really late and it ended up uh going hot on us. So oh. we had to destroy that that portion of it, but it was really beautiful. Uh -huh. It was uh -huh. really uh, uh -huh. we had to <laughs> destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, so that was but it was it was it but was you really destroyed good. it slowly. I think that if you yeah, if you Make sure that you uh, have your time your harvest properly, sure. so you don't have that. So yeah. Anyway, you don't well, that's want kind of cool. You don't want it hot. <laughs> so, what is your favorite types of terpenes from oh, hemp? Oh, look at this. That's yeah. kind of cool. See, now this doesn't surprise me from the last slide. There's a lot of fruity. Uh, you th you smell fruity in here? No, no, no. From the last slide. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a lot of fruity. You know, look, we got strawberry, cherry, gelato, yeah. strawberry. You know, yeah. sativa indica, og kush. Yeah, OG I, I have no idea if that's <laughs> sativa <laughs> indica OG Kush. That's kind of lame. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess <laughs> is that a hemp strain? That's not a hemp strain. Somebody just put that in there. Okay, that's I they put it in there a couple more times. So it must have been a uh, it must sure have been a selected. Same. Yeah, it was probably selected. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Well. Okay. So look, um, let's kind of go down okay, here. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to take no, us back. No. No problem. Look, you got a skunky, fruity, fruity, earthy. Not answered. A lot of people didn't even answer that. That's interesting. Seeing as how, um, <laughs> you know, quality and terpenes are the most important oh, aspect yeah. of it. You know what? I bet you the people who didn't answer this are the people who are growing for fiber. That could be. That's probably because there were a lot. Yeah, they probably don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and that's cool. And even because of the f the seed, the fiber or seed, right? Because that. Right. That's what I wanted to oh. get. So here we go. Somebody likes everything. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> Skunky, fruity, earthy, but fruity. Piney. I think fruity wins. There's only one piney. You know what? Because uh, that's the le most. That's the least popular. I think. It, definitely. Well, of course. That's definitely. The but numbers here you don't. can see skunky. If you add skunky onto here, you like skunky. Know. Oh yeah, well, okay. So this is here's a, here's the trivia question <laughs> that I was. Did you see to, how excited he got? Going to ask you. <laughs> okay. So what terpene is responsible for the skunky smell that comes from the hemp or cannabis plant? Okay, do not look on the internet. That's not allowed. But go ahead and put your answer into the drift. Tell the bot. bot. Tell the bot. Tell, Tell the, the bot. bot. We're going we're gonna to do something special. And, and what was the answer? Uh, how, what, is, what is the terpene that derives the skunky aroma? Yeah, that's the... That's the okay. Yeah, right, right. Which terpene? And uh, you know what would be really cool, too, is if you guys... It's the skunky one. I will add, <laughs> if you guys put into the bot, you know, what's your favorite uh, type of terpene, or if you have a specific terpene, go ahead, put that into the bot. We'll add it to the results, so... Ah, yeah. awesome. So, anyway. Good. Sounds good. Love it. So, but you can see here, fruity, people like that fruity smell. So, that would be like linalool. Yeah. Um, limonene, for example. Um, you know, some of the, like, uh, uh, geraniol. Um, you have uh, neurodial. You know, these are, they're, notice how they always have all at the end, O-L, that means they're alcohols. Uh -huh. Those are actually the, um, the s most stable of all the terpenes. Interesting. Um, they don't really react a lot. So like myrcene, for example, is a, uh, it's a highly reactive compound and it, it's also very volatile because it's a single, um, it's a single monoterpene, okay? Uh -huh. So there are different types of terpenes. There's monoterpenes, diterpenes, sesquiterpenes, blah, 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 blah. You bet. Terpenes. I'm looking at my notes. Yeah. Hi, Myrcene. M Y R C E N E. Right. Myrcene. Right. That's the one that he had to correct me on earlier. I so asked for his help. Here we go. Um, oh. What so are the biggest issues? What are the biggest issues you faced with hemp varieties in the past? Okay. This is kind of interesting because, okay, so somebody has, a, a, you know, they got the seeds, they mm -hmm. put the time in, they got the harvest. 
Mm -hmm. Then they got the plant, they dried the plant, they were either going to make it for smokable flour or extractable, one of the two, yeah. right? And this is really what people are coming back with as, you know, things that you need to watch out for. When they say bad genetics, uh, uniformity, um, I don't know, it's cut off there. Shoot. I don't know what that is, but something associated with the uniformity. Probably a male growth or a male yeah, color something like or that. something right. that happened. I mean, this is a, this is a, that's a good example. Or if it's the plant is too small or if, if they're not uniform um, in their size and things like that. So maybe you get a small plant and then the big plant and the small plant. Sure. This is tested hot. Look at that, 7% tested hot. I mean, we've had that happen to us, and you know, you have to destroy your crop. So that's a, that's a problem, right? You got all that time, yeah, that's all that good. effort. And, and that it, could be not your fault too, right? It could be because you're by somebody who's growing marijuana because there are some states that grow both. Yeah. And if you're near that, then some of those can float over? No, no, no. That's No, I don't think so. But, but what, what does happen is, here's, 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 here's what happens. <laughs> so you, you, you call the state, hello, I'm ready to harvest, right? Yeah. And most of the places have, have a, you know, they'll send out someone to sample it. Okay. Right? And then they sample it. And once they sample it and then they test it and they show, okay, this is less than 0.3% THC. You're, you're ready to go. Okay, great. Then you get a certificate of, a, you know, of merchantability, basically. And, uh, and then, you can, then you're supposed to harvest. And you're supposed to harvest a, a certain time after you receive the go-ahead to harvest. So, and the, so the tested hot really refers mm. to that. That. Uh, that, yeah. If, it, if it's over the 0.3. Yeah, if it's over the 0.3 as tested by the state. As tested, okay. Yeah. On it's that certificate of commerce. Right, so okay. you got to watch it out, you know, because, uh, you know, the longer you let your crop grow, um, the more likely it is that you're going to have a hot uh, crop, right? Oh, and so you yeah. want to you wanna test it. You maybe want to test it ahead of time. That's why it's nice to have, you know, constant testing of your crop at when it comes into the September, October time frame. Sure. You want to test your crop lots of times just to just to make sure that okay, hey, it's getting there. I'm starting to see THC. T time to get the time to get the people here. Sure. So to test it. So that's what that is. And then um, you see another bad genetics, but it's cut off. Shoot, I'll have to see what that is. But here we got if you add the bad genetics here and that bad genetics there in one form or another. Oh, and here's another bad genetics. You add that. That's that's by far the the largest category. And it's probably, again, where somebody picked multiples. That's yes. That's why they're in different spots. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Why would, um, <clears throat> when we're looking at mold or pests, how would that be an issue? Those are the biggest issues, but that doesn't have anything to do with the variety. Um, it can, it? yeah, because, uh, like, mold, mold uh, actually can, um, you know, be a part of the variety. It starts to, it's... In the, the DNA, right there. yeah, oh. start, yeah, okay. and it starts to express. So it's a, it's kind of a disease. Starts there. Well. It's a disease, right? And that's a heritable disease, an inheritable disease. Um, pests, obviously not though. Yeah. But yeah, they had a problem with pests, yeah. obviously. So can't get, get rid of me. Yeah. So then seed <laughs> vendors here to stay without breeding. Uh, okay, so that must mean they're getting males or something in there, and then not answer. A lot of people didn't didn't even answer. Maybe they didn't have any problems with their crops, which is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Good for 23 you. Twenty-three percent. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. So nice. So that's uh that's the bottom line. Now I got some um I got some FAQs that we can come up with here. But first, before we do that, I thought oh. I'd, I'd kind of just kind of go over. What yeah, we let's got go. Here. I mean, yep. yeah. So this is these are seeds. I think I've been I've been showing you what you can see what they look like. Um, they're very very small, and of course, the the quality of seed really has uh, is really important. Um, you know, the quality of seed is super important. So. Um, they're, they're really small though, huh? They are small. So when you, uh, some people buy, um, you know, some people produce four seed and then they, sh they hole take the holes off of those and they crush them and they sell the seed itself. Actually, hemp seed is really tasty. Yeah. Have you, have you I had it? I have. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It is really good. That's and it's good for you too. Yeah. Good high, f very good fiber. Um, yeah. so when, when you plant the seed. Yeah. How many do you plant at one time when you're planting? One, one seed. One seed. And usually you have like a little rock wool, yeah. uh, little rock wool disc. Yep. There's a little hole in the disc. You put that in there and then you... One of them. Yeah. And, it, and it come, they come out. Just one. These are autopilot seeds. So this is autopilot seeds here. And then what do we got? We got cherry wine seeds. 
They all look the same. Obviously, it'd be really cool <laughs> if, <laughs> if, if you could see them differently. Yeah. They're so nice. Yeah. Um, this is some ground material. Cherry wine. And you can, s I mean, this stuff is extremely aromatic, so much so. And you can also see there's look so much. Look at how st that's stuck together. There's so much oil in there that it's actually <laughs> stuck together. So there's, there's uh, this is probably, what, 10 or 15% easy. And even when you when you touch it, you can see it. You, you could form it, I think, if there's so much oil in yeah, there. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is good. Um, and then this is like a decarbed oil or decarbed mass here, so. The decarb, you can see it's a little darker. It's breaking down the chlorophyll that's in there. Um, you would do this, uh, and then you would get the terpenes out. So there's all kinds of, of wonderful terpenes in this. Mm -hmm. And when you convert it from here to here in a, kind of a, a terpene recovery system, these are the terpenes that you get. And look at how liquidy those are. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely liquidy. They, these are Oregon. <laughs> those are lifted terps, basically. Yeah. Um, they smell wonderful. The terpenes smell great. Yeah, they they uh, very chlorophylly. And so what happens is because this the decarb not only activates the THC and the CBD, but it also removes a lot. Of, most of the terpenes are removed at decarb. Yeah, right, exactly. And so we capture those. Well, a lot of the volatile ones are, yeah. are removed there. So and, yeah. and we call those angel tears. <laughs> Look at them. There. But they've been crying a lot. Spectacular. <laughs> Okay. So you would use this uh, type of, of uh, you know, terpenes in a formulation downstream. So yeah. you would add those back into the formulation, and they're uh, strain specific, mm -hmm. so that you get the the profile of the plant, and they would all be in there. So this is just like distilled, or lifted sure. materials. What do we have here? Uh, I think that's some Delta Eight. That's uh, that was from our last show. <laughs> just hanging out. <laughs> just hanging even, out. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> I can't smell anything. I know. Yeah, I know. No, okay. it's, but it's thick. Look yeah, at it that. is thick, yeah. So anyway. Well, because, I mean, all of the other stuff is so aromatic. Yeah, and then we have a big uh, big bunch of buds there. So this is some bucked material, right? And, uh, you know, oh, let me see. I got this. <laughs> this is kind of a, so this is in like an auto flower plant because it's so small. You can see there's a bunch of buds on it. It's small, it's dry. This is, this is the, this is the stick portion here. Uh, that's the, the sticks and stems, and then this is the root right here. I asked him to bring this in and show me um, this, but typically all of the CBD and all the THC and all the cannabinoids and all the terpenes are in these flower buds here. And uh, I know that a lot of you guys know this already. I just thought I'd go over it. And sure. then these right here are the, uh, the sticks and stems. There's, there's really no um, recoverable, uh, you know, like cannabinoids, cannabinoids in, in, in those sticks and stems. But, there, but that's where you get all is, of the fiber. Yeah, that's yep. where all the fiber is. And then also you can see these right here. These are the, the fan leaves. Okay, and the fan leaves, they don't have anything in it either. So here, here's an example of a fan leaf here. That doesn't have any, any recoverable material from it, essentially. No, so just in the bud. Um, but yeah, this is a good corsage, though. Oh, very, yeah. very colorful. Yeah, very colorful. Very nice. Yeah. So anyway, so that that's that. And a lot of people were kind of wondering, okay, well, is there any kind of cannabinoids that are in the, uh, you know, in the root ball? Um, and a lot of people ask that question just basically because they, wa they want to know, is it is it worth saving? Um, I think that you can save this. You can take all these buds off of here. You, these sticks are, you know, you can sell those. Just, just kind of uh, bundle them up or chop them after the fact. Some people take this whole entire plant yep. and... Uh, they chop it up, and a negative associated with that is you're you're basically diluting, uh, you're adding, you're diluting the amount of cannabinoids per unit weight. So mm -hmm. if you took all these buds off, like there, and you, you know, extracted that as a percentage of the weight, this has a higher percentage of weight relative to if you had chopped all this up and diluted it with all these sticks, right? Yep. So this, th if you chopped all this up diluted it, you know, chopped yeah. it all up, you'd have maybe, you know, maybe a 4 or 5% uh, by weight material. In your biomass. In this stuff, it has, you know, 15% by weight material. Yep. So if you're paying to have your uh, crop told or anything, obviously you want a bucket because you'd be paying less yeah. for more material. Yeah, you don't want to pay for the sticks and stems that aren't going to get you the yield to the distillate yeah, correct. and the isolate. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, so you, you, you want that. That's... 
That's the big. That's the big deal, right? And those ones look pretty good. They were. Let me let me see those again. I mean, were they? Um, yeah. So that's a nice. Ooh, smells great. Uh, no, they do smell good. Wow, that is wonderful. Uh, it looks like someone's trimmed them. Now I, I have to say, there's um, there's also trim. Okay, that is. Uh, you see these little tiny leaves here on the sides of the the buds. Uh, I know they're kind of shriveled here, but those are called trim, okay? And uh, cannabis plants have them, and also um, also hemp plants also have them. And that trim, you know, a lot of people basically have a, their entire business. All they do is, you know, extract trim from yeah. cannabis leaves. Sure. Because right? there's all kinds of those trichomes on there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so a lot of people ask, you know, what are trichomes? Um what are I, trichromes? Well, they're they are uh, little. Um, Is it a trichome or a trichrome? It's a trichome. C H O M E, trichome. Com. No, no R. In no there. R. Yeah. Like I, I don't wash my hands. I right. wash my hands. Right. It's a trichome. <laughs> right. Okay. Just yeah. making sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I uh, heard it both ways. I must be from the northeast somewhere. No, I think no. <laughs> don't I they say wash? Do you guys say wash up there? Sometimes I've heard you say wash. No, I think I think that I was I had just been corrected on the, the uh, exact pronunciation of that. Really? Yeah, and oh. so I was like, okay, because I, I didn't ever even. So I'm not a before. complete moron. No, I guess just not. half a moron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this yeah, is so fabulous, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Okay, and it smells so good. So. It really, really does. Well, this is some CBG stuff that we just. Ooh, That's CBG. That? Yeah. Smell good. It does smell good. Yeah. Look at that. Here, let me see if I can put it in here. <laughs> put it in this pipe. You gotta put it in your pipe and smoke it every do now you and get then. Get right? patches on your elbows. I need to get some patches. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Let's see if we can. Look at that. Let me see if I can. That's the decarboxylation process going on right there. By the way, you guys know how to pack a pipe. Pipe. You pack it first. Uh, first. Like a man, second like a woman, and third like a child. Oh. Look, and it's already gone out. Because I didn't pack it right. You didn't pack <laughs> it right. <laughs> but it actually smells pretty good in here. Now that I've got a little bit. Oh, of yeah. I can smell it. Well, ev every day when we come to work, it smells good in mm -hmm, here. Because mm -hmm. we can tell the days that they're they're grinding. We can tell the days that they're decarbing. We can oh, tell the days that very they're. very good. Is it? Yeah. I can smell it. Very smooth. Yeah. I can't keep it going though. I gotta pack it right. But anyway, so that's it. Yeah, it tastes good. Very nice. Tastes great. Less filling. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here I got some FAQs. I thought okay. we'd just kind of go over some. This is. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, this no was problem. a great show and tell. Yeah. Very helpful yeah. and very aromatic. Yeah. One of the things that I did want to point out, you know, in you've got all of these flowers all the way right in there. The buds. Yeah. So those. Right are, right yeah. So this is a very immature plant, and yeah. as it yeah, obviously as it grows, these things will get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and yeah. But it's so it's gotten maybe another month or month month uh, of growth and it should should work out pretty good. So I like it. But yeah, you can see the little flowers in there. Look at all the little white hairs. Beautiful. We got a little bit of got okay. a little bit of time. Yep. All right. So how come some seeds are male? Oh, that's a good question. Okay. <laughs> <Do we have laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Next question. <laughs> Apparently, you know. No, when when uh, okay, so when a botanist has a breeding program for, you know, they'll do, they'll select their strains and everything, and um, sometimes a, uh, sometimes a uh, you know, male, uh, you know, it'll basically be um, the pollen basically is either male or female, and and so that that's where the male and female strain, uh, st you know, strains come from. Okay. Or so yeah, I think that it's. Um, I am not a. Uh, biologist and any biologist who's listening to me, you're like, oh man, he just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> but it really has to come with like if you, if you have like pollens in the air, and that's why a lot of people who grow, you know, like hemp, and they're trying to grow females only, and then if you have an industrial hemp farm uh, that's down the oh way, boy. and there's all kinds of male and female pollen in the air, it's going to ruin their crop. Yes, it will. So um, you know, one thing that you got to people always have to worry about, you know. Their crop seeding out, for example, sure. um, and um, 
not only seeding out, but also when you when you plant them, you got to make sure that you take all the males out because they're mm. going to produce pollen, and then your crop's going to seed out. So gotcha. that, that's the extent of what I know. But um, I'm sure there's lots of people here who are um, more uh, more you know kind of a, more of an expert on that. But I think that it's just suffice it to say that you know you want to make sure that you're always looking for the males you want to get the males out of there and you want to grow by quality seed absolutely so that it's it's uh not doesn't have males and female mix in it yeah and so when you buy the seed they they have a certain percentage there that is yeah yeah, yeah right, right okay they guarantee like so you'll want to see okay if i'm going to buy hawaiian haze for example yeah i'm going to want to talk to the manufacturer of that and say okay well you grew this last last yep. year or give me a test a test case on the crop and, and you know, how many males did they pull out and gotcha. things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. What is the difference between hemp and cannabis? Ooh. What is the difference between hemp and cannabis? <laughs> well, it has to do with the percentage of THC. THC. Okay. So um, the fa- farm bill basically defined hemp as being a variety that produced less than 0.3% right. THC. And so, um, you know, People grow flowers, and as long as it's produced less than 0.3%, it's, it's considered hemp. So it, they're both really technically cannabis. Yeah, I think that we, we refer to cannabis as those strains that are bred and, you know, bred specifically to produce THC. THC, So okay. there is a distinction. It's a little confusing, I right. think. But I mean... But they that's look... How, nearly, that's how I've I, been. nearly identical. They look nearly identical. Okay. And th- but that's how I've been kind of referring to it because yeah and i think the industry does too so it's either hemp or cannabis right 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 and cannabis then would be you know the plant that looks uh the plant that is bred specifically for uh you know higher concentration of thc yeah 50 percent thc 50 percent cbd anything with anything greater than 0.3 percent okay excellent okay and And what okay so a lot of those a lot of those cannabis strains i mean they can be up to you know 20 25 percent uh, THC, so yeah. they can get very, very potent. Very potent. So do that. What are the different parts of the plan? Oh, uh, yeah, I kind of think I went over You went that through a, a lot bit. of that with yeah, the there stems. Was, but here, you can see the fans. The yep. fan leaves are there. You have the flower. You have the root ball. Um, and then you have the sticks and stems. And, of course, you don't want to... You don't really want to take the sticks and stems and, and extract them. So no. that, that's the main thing. But you also have, on the flower itself, you have the trim. Yeah, uh, you know the the little leaves that are uh, around the flower. So you want to trim those off, and there's trichrome on there, trichomes on there, and you should probably you know take those, and you can extract that. If you, the only reason you would take those leaves off of there is if you were trying to make a smokable flower. Ah, uh, and okay. all that all that trim and everything. And the trichomes useful. are really kind of that sticky, right? Yeah. Okay. So they're like little mushroom structures. Yeah. And uh, they can be all different colors, and uh, but usually they're white, and they look like little little mushroom hairs all over the plant. Excellent. It really looks looks beautiful. Okay. And then you know when you when you can squeeze the flower or something, all of that resin that's in there, the mm-hmm. cannabinoids, the terpenes, all that stuff kind of sticks to your fingers. By the way, one of the things that I talked to another uh, farmer, a very large scale farmer, uh, last week, and they they said that when they would they rotate crops, so they grow corn, soybean, onions everything they right. rotate a lot of crops and and hemp and they said that the season for two seasons after growing hemp in one field yeah they get a almost a 20 to 30 percent higher yield really on other crop in that field post wow. hemp wow because for some ever whatever reason uh and if you've found that yourself let let us know but um, because that would be an interesting yeah, study it would be. for all the farmers out there because when, for some reason, the roots of the hemp either give that soil more nutrients right. or take all the bad stuff out. Yeah. I'm not sure which. I don't know either. Or both. Yeah. I mean, But it's, it's a higher yield, and you can see, and they're, they're talking about, you know, foot eight, 12 to 18 inches higher uh, plant structure wow. even, like, the next season. I wonder if that's true. Well, I mean. I, I bet it is. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm just, it's anecdotal, really and it was told to me last week, so I thought I'd bring that up cool. at, as we're talking about different parts of the plant. Cool. That would be an interesting part of the plant. So that we've also, ta- I think, touched on this, but this is one of the questions that came up. What part has the most extractable material? 
Okay, so for extraction, you're going to want to take, you know, you're going to want to have a bucked material that has, yeah, that has all the trim on it. So that's going to be something along this lines. Oops. Yeah, along these lines that is bucked, but yeah, but not trimmed. So, you know, I wouldn't say that. See, this has got some sticks and stems, but this can easily be ground up. And that's kind of, that's kind of. Just uh, bud. Yeah, just bud. So that's the best type. Now, um I wouldn't dilute this if this this is beautiful bucked material. Yeah, I wouldn't dilute this with stems and sticks if I, you know, cr crushing everything up yeah. into uh, okay. into a different thing. So, Got it. yeah, that's the most. So that's the flower and the trim area is where all of the extractable material is, oh. Oh. and you're gonna want to, you know, you're gonna want to make sure that you you buck your material. Okay. Now coming back to your question to everybody. Yeah. Which terpene? creates that skunky smell myrcene it is myrcene yeah yeah i thought we we dropped a bunch of hints we did <laughs> so high myrcene strain gives you that skunky smell yeah and so when you're talking about a fresh material like uh suppose you get uh, fresh material like this and if this was all flour you could uh you know do a rosin press on that a lot of those um myrcenes they kind of will go away as it's dried and as it sits mm. okay so um, because they're uh, monoterpene, and um, also they break down. So um, a lot of the skunky smell is, is really evident in fresh, fresh material. And then as it ages, uh, the myrcene ages, breaks down, and then it, it gets less and less skunky over time. So a lot of people really like that skunky smell. So, um, you know, sometimes if you uh, have materials that are more, that haven't been sitting around for a long time, okay? Something maybe you just harvested, then you can do your terpene uh, collection and get a lot of myrcene in, in here. In the terpene. In the terpene collection, <coughs> yeah. So we had a follow-up question that came up. What, of course, right here, what is, what creates the fruity smell? If myrcene creates the skunky smell, what terpene creates the fruity smell? Okay, that's a whole um, whole bunch of them. And I think I mentioned like linalool, and those are kind of like... Linalool. Linalool, uh -huh. um, limonene, 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 yeah. limoncello. Uh, no, yeah. well, limonene. there's <laughs> limonene. Uh, there's, there's, um, well, there's pinene too, alpha pinene, beta oh. pinene. Okay, but those are the piney ones. People don't like that very oh. much, you know. From, really? Uh, well, I don't know. Although it is the most prevalent of all of the really uh, all the terpenes in there. Okay, so, you know. So well, there's a many that, that well, you have could, that fruit. You can see from our survey that only one person. Selected piney. Piney. Yeah. yeah, isn't it amazing? That is interesting. Uh, one out of one out of fifty three. So that would be the least popular terpene, I'm guessing. I think so. Piney. At least at least with our results. Well, yeah, with our results. Yeah. So keep oh. those cards and letters coming in. Make sure you have everybody that you know fill out that survey. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and we'll just keep on adding it, and uh, maybe in about maybe six months or so, we'll re review the results, and maybe we'll have a a, a growing a growing. Uh, you know, podcast. So yeah. based on the results, it sounds like that, um, like linalool or limon, limonene, limonene. So yeah. I keep wanting to say limoncello. <laughs> limoncello. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, so when, w which one is the most smokable, um, would be dependent on what you like, whether you like that skunky or right. fruity smell. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think that's why you really need to have you know, some sort of, uh, like, the, all the different strains will have expressed different amounts of those. Sure. And so if you want to have a strain that's high in, like, uh, a fruity taste, um, then you need to really investigate that strain. You probably need to find some of the material ahead of time and, and maybe even, you know, t test it out, say, hey, this is good for me, and then buy it. What is the difference between a... Uh, it, when people refer to a hemp strain versus a CBD strain, because the hemp is the flower, but the CBD is the cannabinoid, what is what is the difference? I don't think there is any difference. Okay. I mean, I, I, not that I know. Do you think there's any difference? I don't. I, I don't know. Most people are growing hemp for CBD or CBG. It, or because I would I wouldn't think that there is a CBD strain. I think there's a hemp strain because that's the plant. Right. Right. CBD. There are the the whole entourage of right. cannabinoid right. Uh, cannabis oil that is in there cbd cbg cbc cbn right. whatever but all of those those are not strains right those are actual cannabis oils right 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 
cannabinoids. Um, okay, I'm just kind of going through looking to see if there's any other questions that we need to answer right now. Uh, keep the uh, and and by the way, the team is answering a lot of questions, so we're we're. <laughs> I, when I see them and they're already being answered on there, that's good. So keep asking the questions. The survey is open and out. Yes. And so keep keep it coming. Is if you any? if you want to, you can ask one of our guys and they'll send you a link to this to the, you know, to the survey. Oh, good. That'd be a good idea. Oh right? yeah, great. Get more idea. get more participants in it. You know, I think so. that that I think that that's good. One of the things. Okay, so of all of this that we looked at, the the most interesting to me is the fresh. Yeah. Brown, because it, it 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 is so i mean it doesn't even pour no it doesn't pour it's, it's got a lot of it's oil sticky in it. i love that it's probably 10 or 15 percent in there actually and that stuff really smells very aromatic it really does i um, mean it's Woo. it has a tremendous uh, yeah i mean great. so even <laughs> you know grinding that stuff up is probably very um aromatic experience <laughs> it's, it's good and the other thing is the cbg that you put in your pipe it seems smaller as a bud. Yeah, I think that's just because the buds that you know, this is probably some buds that were growing, and uh, it just so it typically, just, typically, typically it would be the same. You would be the same if okay. not bigger. Yeah, uh, the same. This is the same. You see, it's got a lot of because my dear friends it. Kyle and Renato uh, and Dave, they're growing. You know, CBG. Oh, CBG. Okay, yeah, yeah. specifically, yeah, I just, just didn't know little, little tiny bud. So those are the genetics you want to get. And there are some people who are really looking at growing CBC. You know, this this to me, can you check this? This to me smells much, uh, that smells more fruity, definitely. Is that just me or is that? No, I think that smells fruity. Yeah, so a lot, a lot, a lot, very fruity, very fruity. Very, uh, yeah, a very. So that's a CBG stuff. CBG, so. so I think that that's good. And and what strain is Oh, sorry. That's H. Hauptman. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay, so we're good. Is there anything else that you have that you want to no, cover? I think today? we're safe. I thought this was great. I love it. And what's going to be interesting is as we go into this, apparently next week we're talking about the hemp processing boot camp. All right, that's what we're going to do. Sweet. So next week, hemp processing boot camp. Today we covered a lot. We talked about hemp strains, CBD strains, hemp harvesting, what you can do with the plants and the stems and the fan leaves and, and all the strains. Um, we, we covered... Everything. Oh, myrcene. Yep. Uh, li, 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 linalool. Linalool. Thank you. Limonine. Linalool and limonene. Beta carotene. Very good. So alpha pinene. Um, are there oh, in the surveys? I'm just looking to make sure if I got everything on my test. I, I think we're good. So thank you for being here. These the questions are awesome. There will be a replay. This is a fun and safe place. Ask your questions. Uh, the uh, our team is going to be on answering your questions even after you know the the show here. So oh, just uh -huh. they'll stay on as long as you're there. Hey, if you have any questions for the boot camp. Uh, make sure you put those in there. Uh, hemp we, processing boot camp. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go through all things hemp processing, and uh, it's gonna be a boot camp. All the everything you need to know, basically. Yeah, and yeah. I think that would be good. I think it would be fun sometime to do as a follow up to that, an actual hemp processing boot camp where we're doing a walkthrough. Yeah, we could do that next week if we wanted to. That would be fun because yeah. that, that's what I do with the tours. When And you're all welcome to come for an on-site tour anytime. Give us a shout. Talk yeah. to the, the guys. They'll, they'll uh, set you up. You know, we, we love having you here. We're, we would like that. So thank you for being here. Our favorite part of this is your questions and your engagement. Uh, subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our calculators library. And, you know, the bot can send you links to all of that and our resources, the extraction guides, uh, the advanced extraction guide, the advanced distillation guide, calculators. Um, if you want to register for next week's show, it's at extractlab.com forward slash set dash list. And uh, we are Extract Lab with a K, E X T R A K T. Right. Extract Lab. And uh, we're doing Extract Talks here. Uh, you can engage with us on all social channels, your favorite social channels. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're everywhere. Please subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. And the podcast, we, we need to make a, I want to get our subscribers on our podcast up too. So we should, have a, we should have a contest. <laughs> a big giveaway. Yeah, yeah that would be tell, fun. Tell Jared. Tell Jared. He'll, he'll tell Jared will do us. it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for being here. Good show. Take care. Thank you. Well yeah. done.
And it smells so good in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah.